Selamat pagi, Yang Mulia Premier Li Qiang, Sri Baginda, Yang Mulia para pemimpin ASEAN. Selamat datang di Jakarta, Premier Li. RRT adalah satu dari empat mitra dialog ASEAN yang memiliki status mitra strategis komprehensif. Dan tahun ini adalah 20 tahun aksesi RRT terhadap Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. Kita perlu memaknai semua ini dengan merealisasikan kerjasama konkret yang saling menguntungkan, di mana hal tersebut hanya bisa dilakukan jika kita memiliki trust satu sama lain yang tentu saja harus dibangun dan dipelihara oleh semua pihak. Trust dan kerjasama konkret inilah yang dapat menjadi positive force bagi stabilitas dan perdamaian kawasan. Demikian dari saya dan dengan ini saya nyatakan KTT ke-26 ASEAN dan RRT dibuka. Selanjutnya saya mengundang Yang Mulia Premier Li Qiang, Perdana Menteri RRT untuk menyampaikan pidato pembukaannya. Saya persilahkan. Thank email last day to the meeting as ASEAN observer, and I look forward to in-depth exchanges with friends both old and new. In 2013, it was also in Indonesia that President Xi Jinping proposed building a closer China-ASEAN community with a shared future. Over the past 10 years, China and ASEAN have forged ahead hand in hand and contributed to each other's successes. Facing great changes unseen in a century, we have embarked on a right path featuring long-standing good neighborliness and shared progress and prosperity. China has remained the world's second biggest economy, and ASEAN's combined GDP has become the fifth largest in the world. Our joint efforts are fully reflected in the following four areas. First, we have been committed to treating each other with sincerity, and our political mutual trust has grown deeper. Sincerity is the key that opens the heart, and trust is the bridge that connects the minds. No matter how the international situation evolves, China and ASEAN have maintained close exchanges and communication, respected each other's development path, and accommodated each other's major concerns. China was the very first country to establish a strategic partnership with ASEAN and took the lead to elevate the relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership in 2021. And that is a strong testament to the strategic trust between our two sides. Now China has reached important consensus separately with six ASEAN countries on building a community with their shared future, and we hope to do so with more countries in the future. Second, we have been committed to mutual assistance, and our good neighborly friendship has become stronger. 
China and ASEAN countries enjoy geographical proximity and close affinity. We have adhered to the five principles of peaceful coexistence and the purpose of the TAC. We seek common ground while setting aside differences, properly handle disagreements through dialogue and consultation, and consistently deepen practical cooperation in the traditional and non-traditional security fields. We have preserved peace and tranquility in East Asia in a world fraught with turbulence and change. In particular, we confronted the COVID-19 challenge by coming to each other's aid in those difficult times, and that is a reflection of our brotherly ties in face of adversity with concrete actions. Third, we are committed to mutual benefit and our will and cooperation has been more productive. China and ASEAN see each other's development as an important opportunity, and we have kept markets open to each other. Last year, our two-way trade volume reached over 970 billion U.S. dollars, and that is more than doubling the volume a decade ago. We have been each other's top trading partners for three years running. In 2021, at the special summit to commemorate the 30th anniversary of China-ASEAN dialogue relations, President Xi Jinping pledged that China will buy up to $150 billion worth of agricultural products from ASEAN in the next five years. Now, to date, over $55 billion worth of these products have been imported faster than expected. We have reached the full consensus on regional con connectivity, delivered a steady stream of signature outcomes in high-quality belt and road cooperation, and made solid progress in building the new international land-sea trade corridor. All this has brought new opportunities for both sides. Fourth, we have been committed to coordination and inclusiveness, and our common development has become more sustainable. Both Chinese and Southeast Asian cultures value harmony between man and nature. Following the philosophy of green, low carbon, and sustainable development, we have um, fostered new cooperation highlights in climate action, environmental protection, energy transition, and poverty reduction. The China ASEAN Year of Sustainable Development Cooperation was held in the past two consecutive years. China's Global Development Initiative, the GDI, and the ASEAN Community Vision 2025 echo and reinforce each other, and the GDI has been widely recognized and welcomed by ASEAN countries. The China ASEAN cooperation has come a long way, and the key reason is that we both have a keen understanding about hardships. We both have a relentless pursuit of peace. We both have a strong aspiration for development. And we both take real actions to preserve regional stability. As long as we keep to the right path, no matter what storm may come, China-ASEAN cooperation will be as firm as ever and press ahead against all odds. And we each will achieve greater development and progress in the course of such cooperation. So those are my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Selanjutnya sebelum kita mulai sesi pleno yang akan dilakukan secara tertutup dengan hormat saya mohon awak media untuk meninggalkan ruang pertemuan. Terima kasih.